What's up guys, Rob here with RK Motorsports and today we're going to start working on the 2008 Triumph Daytona 675 rebuild. The last video with the CBR 600 rebuild, you guys said you wanted to see this one next, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this happen and this thing is going to get turned around real quick. Here we go. Alright guys, so here she is, 2008 Triumph Daytona 675 Triple. So let's kind of go over a little bit of the damage. Um, so obviously, you know, I pointed out earlier, this fucking wheel is just destroyed, totally just tacoed in right there. Um, here's the bottom of the forks, which uh, should be connected over there. Um, so I actually ordered a set of forks already, so I'm waiting for those to come in the mail. I uh, got a little bit of a little bit of rash on the headlight there, not too bad. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a new stay bracket. What else we got? The side doesn't look too bad. A little bit of a little bit of damage on the case. Nothing nothing crazy. Um, good part about this is the guy actually just put a brand new chain and sprocket uh, set on the bike before um, before he wrecked it. So it's basically brand new. So that's that's really good. Um, I did see, I think I saw a power commander in here too. Yeah, uh, looks like it might have a little damage. So we'll see if that works. Aftermarket exhaust, um, I've never heard of this brand before. Remus? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure maybe if that's like a brand from overseas or something. I'll have to look into that a little bit. But uh, we got some Q3 pluses on here. Still pretty good tread on there. Um, and when i saw the bike uh the ad for the bike basically i just saw you know the frame rear wheel and nothing on it just basically the way it sits right now uh, without even this this front wheel and you know that's what i was going off of when i saw the bike in person it still had the plastics the seats are still in good shape uh, i've got you know passenger pegs uh, the brake caliper right there, windscreen, tailpiece, and also got this kick-ass Triumph jacket included in it. So that's awesome. And the big winner here, I was super worried about this bad boy, the tank. Now I thought that I was going to have to spend a hefty amount of money to buy a new Triumph tank for this Daytona. And this thing is pretty much in perfect condition. I thought, you know, even if it was included, that it was going to be smashed to hell. But really, the only damage that's on it is a little bit of rash. You can, I mean, a little bit of scuffing on the paint right there. Other than that, it's, it's basically in great shape. So that's kind of an overview. Um, I'm going to go through jack it up, uh, try and get the front end off, and uh, start slapping this bad boy together. So, here we go.
All right, guys, so I got the bike pretty much all stripped down now. I got the new front end on with the new forks, looking good. And a little bit more of the damage that I can see from the front end. The other arm of the stay bracket is broken off, so I got the new one here. And it turns out that the front ram duct, I removed that. And some of these little brackets where, the, where it bolts onto are broken, so I got to get a new one of those. But other than that, it looks like the headlight is all complete. Tabs are all intact, which is good, so I can reuse that. And it looks like this little scuffing on the light right here. I'm probably going to try and, you know, sand that down and we'll see if we can buff that out. I think it's salvageable. I don't think I'm going to need to get a new light. Um, but the other thing that I did notice from taking the front end off is this little guy. It looks like a part of the frame broke off and it's actually the stopper that's on the frame, the neck of the frame, that, uh, you know, when you turn the forks, these little stoppers would push against the piece that's in the middle here, and that would prevent the bike uh, from turning more than it should. So I'm thinking, you know, in the wreck, the bike hit that stopper and it kind of snapped it off. So I've got a buddy of mine. He's going to help me out. We're going to try and weld that up and get a new, get a new stopper put in there and I think we'll be good to go. It doesn't look like there's any cracks or anything that strayed out from, from where that damage was sustained, so I think we'll be good. There's no structural damage or anything. We just gotta put that new stopper on. I also wanted to check out the coolant just for the hell of it to see what this looked like, to see if I'd need to change it. And this is disgusting. This is just a nasty, slimy, brown discolored, Ugh, it's, it's nasty. So I'm going to do a coolant flush on this too because the bike's a 2008. Judging by that coolant, it's probably last had an, a coolant change in 2008. So that's not good. So we'll, we'll flush that out and we'll get some new stuff flowing in there. And another thing that I'm going to try and do next is I'm going to try and diagnose the wiring situation because we've got stuff all over the place. Um, I'm pretty sure this has to go back to the the starter um, because we got direct power coming from the battery it's got to go to the starter so I gotta I gotta figure that wiring out we've got that power commander too and I've never really had any good luck with power commanders hooked up to bikes so we'll see if that one works I guess the next part would be you know throw the gas tank on and throw the gauge cluster on and we'll see if she fires up so that's where we're at we'll keep her going Okay, so I got the battery connected. Uh, it turned out the starter solenoid uh, starter relay needed to be installed, so I, I just threw that on. That's what those wires were connecting to. And I just threw the, the ignition and stuff, the, the kill switch, the start switch, um, back on the bike just so I can see if I can you know, test it out and get it started. So I have not seen this gauge cluster light up yet since I've owned the bike, so I'm going to test that out right now. We'll see if this thing starts. That's uneventful. <laughs> let's try this again. I, I didn't have the, uh, the kill switch plugged in, so let's try this now. Hey, there we go. Awesome. Okay, 23,603. I think when I bought the bike from the guy, he said there was like 16 or 17 or 18,000 on it or whatever, so... I guess the real mileage is 23,000. So I was just getting ready to throw the tank on the bike to see if I can get this thing fired up. Um, and I was looking for the hose that connects to the gas tank that supplies fuel to the engine. And it looks like I found that, except that it got sheared off, must have been in the crash or something. Um, so that little connector piece isn't there that would connect to, uh, to the fuel pump on the gas tank. So I'm gonna have to order a new one of these fuel lines. There's a little connector down here little gray connector where it, where it connects to. Um, so I think it's just this small little section I'll need to order. So I'll get that ordered, and then once that comes in, I can move forward with trying to get this started, and uh, hopefully she fires up. All right, guys, so I'm just getting ready to load the Triumph up so we can go to my buddy's house and get that 
part on the frame welded. Um, so I'm gonna load her up. We had a nice little ice storm, so got a bunch of icicles, a little slippery out today. So hopefully we get the bike there to his house in one piece and we don't go off the road. So I'm gonna load her up and we'll, we'll be on our way. Alright guys, we got the bike back, steering stopper is now welded back onto the frame. All I got to do is just touch that up and paint that, and then we'll get forward with reassembling the bike with putting a new fuel line on, testing it out, making sure it runs, and we'll start slapping it together. So it has been a few days, I finally got my new fuel line in the mail, and my new ram air duct for the front of the bike because our old one was broken. Shout out to uh, this guy in New Jersey that I've been working with. He has been uh, awesome with being able to get me some parts for the Triumphs. I know they're super hard to find parts here in the U.S., but he has been parting out a bike and he's been helping me out with getting these parts. Uh, I also got a new uh, shift lever uh, rear set for this side because mine is broken. So he has been an awesome help with getting these parts together. And uh, so I'm going to get this fuel line on. I'm going to throw the tank on and we'll see if we can get this thing started. So right here is our old fuel line with that ripped off end. Don't need that anymore. And here is the injectors with the fuel rail and our new fuel line. So I'm going to throw that on and we are going to attempt to start the bike up. Okay, so I've got the new fuel line in, I've got the gas tank put on the bike with uh, everything hooked up, I've got the power commander connected, I checked the oil in the bike, oil level looks good, uh, I just want to like to double check that before I try and start the bike. I've got the gauge cluster connected, I got the tip over sensor facing up, so next thing we got to do is see if she starts. Um, so I'll turn the key on, kill switch. Fuel pump just primed, that sounds good. We're in neutral, and here we go. Ooh, didn't want to start. Okay, let's try that again. Battery might be a little low. Fuel pump primed. All right, let's try this again. Fuel pump priming, she's in neutral. So close, so close. All right, come on, baby. Fuel pump primed. Oh, so close. All right, so just for the hell of it, I threw the throttle cables on, connected it to the throttle just to see if I can give it some gas when we try to start it. So uh, let's try this now. if it's a power commander. Holy shit! Wow, that was loud! Woo! Yeah, we got it! Hell yeah! <laughs> oh my god, a little too much fuel in the exhaust. Fuck, dude. 
backfired like a son of a bitch. Wow. All right. Yeah, we got her going. Hell yeah. Sounds good. Oh, hell yeah, dude. She runs. That I'm not gonna lie, that backfire scared the hell out of me. Oh yeah, she runs. She runs. Got a little condensation there. Woo! <laughs> Alright. Oh, this little smoke doesn't look good though. Might be a little might be a little oil on the exhaust or something. So I just started her up again, and it did look like there's a little bit of oil that's on the uh, the exhaust headers, so uh, I'm not too worried about that smoke that came up and everything. Um, I'm just gonna run the bike a little bit and we'll, we'll have that uh, oil that's on there burn off. guys so I just got the rear set put on the new rear set for this side because our old one was broken I've got the new foot peg on over here that's good and I also just took the cover off of this because I thought the gasket was bad since we had a little bit of oil leaking down here so I do have the new gasket um, but when I popped this off and I looked at the gasket the gasket was fine but there was a bolt on the bottom here uh, look actually I, I relocated it up to here there was a little rash and it was actually loose so the bike must have gone down and kind of un untightened that bolt a little bit so that's why there was a little bit of oil leaking down here so i kept the original gasket on there since it was all good and i just tightened everything up so we shouldn't have any more leaks now so a little update today is actually the day after christmas 2019 um i got my fairings in the mail for this thing i got those the day before christmas so that was a nice little gift um from the mailman so I'm going to go through, I'm going to do the coolant flush on here, and then after that we're going to start putting the fairings on. Another thing, you guys are awesome. Um, you guys have been subscribing like crazy. I cannot believe how many subscribers you guys have been um, adding to this channel. We already passed a thousand, so at the end of the video, stick around. I'm going to put my Instagram link, um, and I'm going to try and do a little giveaway for everybody just to show my appreciation. This is awesome that you guys have been reacting and sharing and, and just being super supportive for these videos that I've been doing. So stick around, we'll uh, keep finishing this up and then uh, like I said, stick around to the end of the video and I'll put my Instagram and uh, maybe we'll have a little giveaway. So here we go. Okay, so for the coolant flush, what I just did is I have the bike on the kickstand, so that way, you know, the lowest part of the cooling system is going to be right here. 
So I undid that hose, let all the old coolant run out, and then what I have now is I have a 50-50 mix of vinegar and water, distilled water. Um, what this is going to do, I'm going to run this through the bike, and if there's any like deposits or you know any gunk that's in there, the vinegar is going to help kind of eat away at those and, and clean out the system. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pour that 50-50 mix in the radiator. I'm going to throw the tank on, run the bike up, get it up to temp. Um, that'll kind of help clean out the system, and then we'll drain it out. We'll flush it with some more distilled water a couple times just to make sure we get everything out of there. And then after that's all set, I'm going to fill everything with new coolant, and then we'll be all set with the coolant flush. So I just got finished running the bike up to temperature. I let it run for probably about 10, 15 minutes until you know temperature got up and the fan kicked on. That way I know that all of the all of the vinegar and water solution ran through the whole bike. And now I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. And then once the once that cools down, I'm gonna pop that hose off of the bottom again down here. I'm gonna pop that hose off and then we're gonna drain out all of that uh, vinegar and water mixture that just ran through the bike. And I'm gonna see how cloudy and how discolored this looks, and that'll kind of tell us what the inside of the engine uh, cooling system looked like. So we're gonna wait for this to cool down, and then I'm gonna drain that out. Um, just a little note, you never wanna do this when the bike is hot. You always wanna make sure that anything with the cooling system, wait until the bike has cooled off before opening it or like taking off the reservoir cap or, or, uh, or anything like that. Ooh, there we go. A little steamy, a little steamy. She's still a little warm, but uh, it's cooled down enough. So it looks like it's a little light brown color, nothing really bad. I got most of the coolant out of the bike already before putting the vinegar and water in. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for this to all drain out. I'm gonna take it off of the stand, get it on its side so this is at the lowest point of the cooling system so that way everything flows out. And then I'm just gonna use uh, straight distilled water and I'm gonna flush that through the bike a couple times just to get all the vinegar out. And then after I flush that a couple times with the water, then I'm gonna put the coolant in and we'll be all set. So I just did the last flush with just the distilled water solution and everything was coming out clear. So now I'm gonna take my coolant and I'm gonna fill up the radiator and the cooling system. Now this is what I have, um, it's just kind of a generic coolant to use. Um, the reason why I got this one is because it is silicate free right there, free of silicate. Um, I did some research on some of the other bikes when I needed to put some coolant in. Um, I mean, I know I could get, you know, the Triumph recommended, you know, coolant to put in the bike, um, but at least with like the Hondas, some of the gaskets and seals are rubber. And if you use any other coolant that has any silicates in it, I've heard that over time it can deteriorate the rubber gaskets and seals. So that's why I use uh, silicate free coolant. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it in the bike. And after that, we're gonna start working on the headlight, doing some restorations with that. I'm gonna try and buff this out. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing next. So I have some good news and I have some bad news about the Daytona 675 rebuild. The good news is that I got my fairings in the mail, but the bad news is that they sent the wrong style fairings and they will not fit this bike. What I ordered was uh, 2006 through 2008 fairings for the Daytona, and they sent me a 2009 and up model fairings. So unfortunately it's not going to fit this bike. Um, so I'm going to have to sort that out with the supplier and try and get that squared away so that I can get the new fairings on this bike ASAP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this as part one of two, um, kind of as a rebuild process because I know you guys have been dying to see what this bike is looking like, how it's coming along. Um, and I'm also going to have the giveaway. So I'm going to put my Instagram link down below here and be sure to go follow that. I'll post some more uh, details on the giveaway. Um, as soon as I can and just kind of show my appreciation of you guys supporting this channel so much. So another thing that I'm going to be doing since this one is kind of going to be put on the back burner, 
I'm gonna have to do a new rebuild. So do you guys wanna either see a, Day or a, sorry, not a Daytona. Do you guys wanna see a Kawasaki 636 rebuild or a Yamaha R6 rebuild? So let me know in the comments below what you guys wanna see. And uh, until then, I guess it's a waiting game until these fairings come in. So if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you like this video. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace.